maybe okay let me move on to sean is this you know the the plan going forward sean because i heard you say that you want seven queens that's what you said are you planning on staying with all seven in the same house by that time by the time i get to seven i'll be able to do whatever i want so like We'll have like mansions. If we have to live in a building, we can buy like multiple places in the building. Like however we, however much space we need to make that work, we'll make that work. And if that doesn't happen, if if you don't get to the point where you can afford your mansions, are you just gonna cramp I, everyone in like a commune setting? Why would I? Why would I take on responsibility that I'm not ready for? That wouldn't make sense if I'm not in a position to handle that responsibility. I'm not gonna put myself in that position. Are you in a position right now to handle the two queens that you do have? Why do they not each have their own mansion? Okay. So, what are they going to do in a mansion all day by themselves? That's not the point. The question was, okay. why do they not have it now? But no, you're asking me a point. You're asking me something that they don't even want. What are they going to do all day in their own mansions? Besides literally Shanice. not never Hold on, because what they're going to okay. do is never be there and want to be with their man. But like, you see, here's girls, the thing. Girls, girls, girls. When girls get a man, most of the time, if they really like him, all they want to do is be around him. They want to sleep next to him every night. They want to hang out with him. They don't even be in their own place like that. Maybe I'm mistaken, but that's just what I've experienced. Why would I rush one? I don't like this is the way I look at things. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the way I look at it. For me, I feel like rich and wealthy are two different things. Mm -hmm. If I will be completely transparent, guys, we I am not a uh, Sean, uh, wait. I'm not gonna let you go on a rant and change the topic no, and, and go rant. off course. I'm hold just, on, hold on. Just, you know what? I'm just gonna go But you this. didn't but you didn't even answer the question though. You're not answering the question, you're going off topic, and that's why I'm trying to reel it back. Something they don't even want. But they didn't say so. You're speaking on their behalf. About, Do they about, don't they no, have their own speak. voices? All right, all right, how about this? You should ask them what they want. I just asked Shanice, she spoke about the kids and the husband and da, 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 da. I'm going to come to Olivia. I was asking you about providing for that. So let me get this straight. Because I have two queens, you feel like I should buy each of them a mansion. Is that correct? It's not about the mansion. It's about being able to provide for them separately. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I see your point. For us, we want to stay as as close as possible one to develop our relationships and communication and number two um you can sit up here and spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars paying for two different places an extra ten to fifteen thousand dollars or you can take that ten to fifteen thousand dollars and put it into like investments and for me you guys people could not imagine how much i've sacrificed sometimes it's an unbearable load to be completely transparent to achieve mm -hmm. our goals, like more than you guys could ever, 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 ever imagine. And honestly, knowing what I know now, for me personally, I feel like I would have scaled my business to a million a month before I ever discovered. But because one thing this re this relationship has taught me that is that a man, you can have a woman as an asset, but as a man, honestly, bro, like you gotta even be more of a leader like you cannot count on i'm not gonna say you can't count on people but you gotta bury a, bear a lot of weight and knowing what i know now i personally feel like i like i would want to be at the point where of having a business of already doing a million a month uh and maybe that's just because like i'm like really 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 i got really 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 big goals but um yeah, that's that's just not the that's just not the move right now. Like you can go and rush and do that, but for me, I would rather pay for like the lifestyle, upgrade the lifestyle out of passive income and not earn income. And right now, I don't have a lot of passive income. I have like I don't even have a lot of earned income. My business has a lot of earned income, but for me, I invest a lot into like myself, into mentorship, into the business, into things that will allow me to get to the point to make a million dollars a month. And once I'm doing a million dollars a month, then it's time to buy the assets. Once you have the assets, okay. you have true indestructible wealth, you got cash flow every month, and you are in a much better like position. 
Okay, that's fine. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that, having those aspirations. But what I'm trying to understand is how that fits into the whole family dynamic, right? Because right now I'm hearing a lot of me, 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 I, 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 I. Hence, I'm trying to ask, how does that then filter into each of your queens, you see? So anyway, do you consider yourself someone who is able to accept other people's opinions, even if they differ to yours? I feel like as long as they're respectful, yes. Is it something I feel like I can improve upon? Yes. But I do feel like I'm receptive. If I didn't, I didn't get to where I'm at, and I'm not trying to say, oh, I'm the greatest thing ever, but I have achieved things that 99% of people walking in America will never do. Um, I don't think that makes me any better than anybody. I think I just got the right information and implied the right information. But if I wasn't receptive to that information in the first place, then I would have never got here. Because I dang sure didn't get here on my own. Like I come from the lowest of the low. Like I am the lowest of the low. My mom was like on drugs and like all type of stuff. And like the lowest of the low. Like I had bad relationships, bad friendships. Like I failed in the military. Like I was the lowest of the low. I've been homeless four times in my in my adult life. Like hold on, like, hold on. Come from I, I didn't I didn't get here. And I'm not trying to say oh I made it, but I didn't get to this point. Like like acting on information that only I knew. Like I had to be receptive to somebody to get to this point. Nobody yeah, yeah. has potential on their own. So I feel like when people have, I don't listen to everybody, but the people I do listen to, like I definitely listen to them, if that makes sense. No, I hear what you're saying, Sean. And then I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, you know, it's your life story and that's fine. But I'm just, I, I just want to know, when your queens disagree with you or, we, or when you or when they have an opinion that is different to yours, do you accept that or you accepting other people's different opinions is for everyone else except your queens? They must always uh, you guys must have the same sort of outlook because it seems like if someone or if one of them, especially maybe Shanice, says something different that you don't like, you seem to take it personally, like she's not allowed to have a different opinion. And I don't mean, I don't want to get Shanice in trouble or anything, because Jesus, no, 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 she's, no, no. she's walking on eggshells. Come on, man, stop. So, <laughs> she, she, you guys, the funny thing is, you guys literally just saw her disagree with me, and it, and it was like a learning moment for me. Even though I was like, oh, wait, okay, cool. There's some relevance to that. Um, my thing is this. I don't care if my woman disagrees with me, but here's how I feel. I feel like I personally like, and it could be a flaw of mine. I don't know. Maybe it's just the ego thing. I personally like my woman to support me, especially when I'm in front of other people. If I'm wrong, if you want to correct me, I feel like that should be like, 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 like later. Like for me, I like a more united front when it, when it comes to like that. Um, so I think it just depends on like the approach, but we, we have disagreements all the time. They educate me all the time when it comes to like how to do different things. Like when Olivia first told me like, let's go TikTok live. I was like, that's stupid. That ain't gonna work, but whatever, let's try it. So they come to me with ideas all the time. Like I don't okay. know everything. Any and then do you, if, if guy, they're wrong, do you support them? Any guy that does not listen to his queen, is kind of like an idiot. Like, cause women have this thing called intuition and they can sense stuff that's not there. Um, so I, I feel like it's all like checks and like balances. It just totally like depends. Okay, but then when they're wrong, do you do the same thing? Do you support them and have the united front and then correct them in the background? Because it seems like you're quick to snap on everyone and be whispering. And then, but you expect them to always be, you know, having yeah, that I, I same. That you guys see what you want to see. You guys don't know the conversations that go on off camera. Um, so it just totally depends. Like I said, I'm not a perfect person by any means, but um, I like, I think the beauty of people lies in like the diversity of like its culture. So like, they're going to have different opinions. Maybe. Like they give me ideas sure. all the time. Okay, and then just one last question. Your polygamy or the setting and what is the purpose? Like what what are you trying to to build out of this? Apart from the wealth and whatnot, what else is is from this and what are these ladies getting from this? And I don't want to say girls because I find that very de not demeaning, but you know, these are ladies. Um what is the purpose? What is this polygamy, you know, mounted on? What is the foundation? Well, and by wealth, we don't mean money. We mean impact <clears throat> on people. We want to positively impact as many people as we can. And that's what we're going to do. Do you think that your queens are positively impacted by you? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Olivia, I how think, are you? I think any woman will be positively yes. impacted by me. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm the type of guy, I don't want nothing from a woman that I'm dating. The only thing I want to do is help you reach your potential. If you look me in my eyes like, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next four months. You know what? I'm going to be like, okay, sweet. This is what we got to do. What can I do to help you? Do you need a workout plan? Do you need a meal plan? Anything that I can do to help you. If I see you slacking on your workout, guess what? I'm gonna be like, hey, you should go to the gym. Hey, you told me you're going to do this. Guys, nobody reaches their potential alone. We all need a little push sometimes. And the thing about me, the thing about people, they may not, what they don't like, is they're so used to like the fakeness and like the, the BS that when they see somebody that's real, that's unapologetically them, they don't know how to really deal with it. People are afraid to have an opinion. They are afraid to speak the truth. But me, I'm not like that. I feel like I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to hear. In my relationships, I don't really want nothing. I don't really want much from my queens. Loyalty, respect, communication. That's it. That's really it. I'm here to try to help you be a better you. That's the number one thing. And I feel like a lot of guys don't have that mentality. I look at a relationship as a place where you go to give, not where you go to take. So when I approach a relationship, I'm like, what can I give this person? If I don't have nothing to give you, we don't belong together, period. I hear you, Sean. I hear you. It just sounds like it's a lot of fixing and you're on this high horse trying to fix everyone. But I mean, maybe it's not what you intend on doing, but it seems like, you know, it's it, it just, no, 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 it's just how I'm hearing it. It comes off as you, you, you're seeing a gap and you're saying, I'm going to make you better. I'm going to help you do this. I'm going to do that. What man wouldn't want to empower their queen? Who, it's who, not about who, empowering. Who, I use the word. Who, a real man is a man of service. A real man is going to spend his time building people up. Like that's all every great man. They do that. They're literally trying to help solve the biggest problems of the world. That's like what men do is in our nature to protect and provide. It's in our nature to protect and to provide. Yeah. Provide as well. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. All good. Um, Olivia, just, uh, I, I don't really have much to ask you, but did you also, maybe just the same question about how you've pictured your family in the future. Was polygamy, you know, something that you've ever thought of or is it something that you just found yourself in? I didn't even know polygamy was a thing. Um, until? Until, obviously, I met Sean. Um, I did not know it was a thing. It's something that is not broad. It, it, that's not common, mostly in America. Um, very... I would say frowned upon too, as you can see from the comments. Um, now, the thing is, it's because I wasn't aware of it and aware of how it could actually align with my future. Just like mm -hmm. finances. I believe that people are don't do well with their finances and with their money because they're not aware of how to. And they're not aware of how it aligns with helping them be better, right? So for me, all I had to know was just have a little bit of information, right? And I made the decision from there that this is something that's super aligned with my future. So I just moved. Okay. So so you only had, I guess, one reference, which is from Sean about polygamy. And that's all you, you had to go on from what you're saying. Because you didn't know anything about it. And you were only exposed to it when you met Sean. So his understanding and his interpretation of polygamy is all you know. Yes. Okay, got it. No, you know, that's fine. You know, the, you know the beautiful part about a relationship? Yeah. Is that two people get to talk to each other and be like, hey, what's your boundaries? Hey, what do you like? What do you like? And two people get to come up with an agreement as two grown adults and do what works best for the both of them. It's funny how that works. No, but listen, so you don't have to be condescending or, or sarcastic about it. But here's the thing. Wait, wait, wait. I'm still talking. But my, my thing is this. You, you're you jumping into, and I was speaking to Olivia, by the way. But um, the thing is that she says that she knew nothing about it. 
And so what I'm summarizing it to is that, okay, you didn't have any other info. The only info you had was what you received from Sean, which is a one-way street, right? But then you open, you talk about it, and eventually she agrees. So don't get defensive. I'm just going off of what she said. I'm just making a logical point. I think that every time I make a logical point, you guys take it as like an attack. Like, But the truth is, the way relationships work, two, two fully grown consenting adults get to sit down, have an adult conversation, and come to an agreement. It's only two people in the relationship. My relationship is with Olivia. My relationship is with Shanice. That's it. I just happen to be dating both of them. It's it's no different than a monogamous relationship. It's just multiple. No, no, no. It is different because you've got micro relationships and you've got a macro relationship because you guys, all three of you guys are staying in the same house. So there's no way that they can't have a relationship with each other. You cannot exclude them from each other if they're under the same roof. They are not living in two different parts of the world and they never see each other. They breathe the same air. They drink from the same tap. So yeah. they do also have a relationship. Yeah, I agree. Whether with you're good or bad. Not, it's not an intimate relationship. It doesn't have to be an intimate relationship. You have an, a relationship with your parents. It doesn't make it intimate, but well, it's still a relationship. We have relationships with everybody. Everybody that's in our life we have a relationship with, but I was specifically speaking about an intimate relationship. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. All I was saying is that they also have a relationship. But actually, interestingly enough, Olivia, how do you find your relationship with Shanice? What do you mean, how do I find it? How is your, okay, how's your relationship with Sean? Let's start there. In general. In general? Mm-hmm. I have a romantic relationship with the king. How do you find it? How do you experience it? What kind of a relationship is it? Not, I'm not asking you to define it. I'm trying to understand your experience of it. What? My experience of my romantic relationship with Sean is that we do romantic things my, Listen, my, my my relationship with Shanice is friendship and we do friendship things Olivia yes you know how somebody asked you like how your day and you describe like what you did today and what you did. she's asking you what makes like how is your relationship it's amazing it's amazing yeah. So in that same, so, so in that same light, I'm then asking, how are you experiencing your relationship with Shanice? That friendship relationship? How, how is that experience for you? It's great too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Now that's fine, Olivia. Thank you so much, guys. Um, all the best. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on your live. You got a business? Yeah. I've, I've got businesses. Um, All right, awesome. I've got, what kind of business you got? So I've got real estate business here in South Africa, but I also do, um, I'm also into spiritual things. So I do spiritual readings. I'm a Sangoma. I don't know if you know what that is, but uh, I do dream interpretation. I do readings, ancestral readings, all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very big on spiritual stuff. How can, how can, what problems do you help solve when you, with that, with the, with the spiritual readings and all that? All kinds of problems could be relationship problems, financial problems. So I get to the root of why your life is off balance. For example, mm -hmm. like if I were to interpret, um, you know, when I was speaking about Shanice and that experience of on the stairs going down towards the family. For me, when I speak up, when you speak about going downstairs, that indicates an instability or feeling like you are on a slippery slope. So it's at that point in time, you might not have been in a good place and it was related to your family dynamics. So that's kind of the interpretations that I do. Hmm. Okay. So wh where can they find you? How can they find more information out about that? Um, my email address is on my bio. It's kokomohadi at gmail.com. Mm. And I do readings for internationally. I do, well, obviously, you guys, everyone is around, but yeah, face to face, internationally, everywhere. Awesome. Cool. I'm not going to lie. I love your accent. Like, I love uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for Bye. waking up. Thank you for waking up early for us. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye. What the heck?
Fit J. Hi. Hi. I'm trying to turn on my camera. Hi. I believe Hi. in you. <laughs> um, is it required? This is only my second time seeing you guys live. Is it required that I ask a question or? It's required that you turn your camera on. Oh, yeah. Is it on now? Oh, wait, save it. Hello. I've never done this before. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. I love hey. the name, by the way, Fit J. Yeah, so um, my name is Jay Marie. I'm actually the founder of Girl Get Your Body Fit, which is growing to be the number one fitness community for black and brown women to thrive in wellness. And, you know, you guys have done an amazing job of amassing attention. <laughs> um, and so I really want to say, you know, congratulations to you guys. I hope that um, on the other side of this, you guys have the back end set up so that, um, you know, you're amassing as much, you know, that you can financially. Um, but they said, girl, this ain't no promo. Look, if the audience is here, I'm going to promote as much as possible. But do I have promo. to ask a question? And by the way, by the way, I want to say I love your pitch. The fact that you're clear, you're concise, oh, you've done this before, you're going places. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, it's a lot of black and brown girls who are on here who are trying to um, expose themselves to um, another side of life, which is the reason why I tried to um, get on here. Oh, people are saying I'm so pretty. I appreciate. Listen, the reason why I want to get on here is because on the other side of the life that you want, is the mindset that you need. I'm not trying to be a third. I'm trying to let you guys know to, and especially in what I do, I help a lot of women lose weight, build booties. Um, you have to first be able to visualize yourself. All my girls, I'm sending all my queens to you to build their booty. Like <laughs> you have to first be able to um, visualize the life that you want to um, amass for yourself. And so if you can't, visualize yourself being the most successful version of you being the woman that you want to be then you can't become it and so um i want to invite you all to my next 21 day challenge it begins in nine days um also i just hit fifteen thousand followers on my TikTok, and so um i have my glue guy on sale for 15 dollars. and so you can come over to my page girlgetyourbodyfit.com get her off why get her off why get her off but no buy that for 15 bucks Screenshot it to me. I'm gonna cash up and pay it for you. First person, first person I see that buys that buys that the DM. and sends me the DM. Screenshot it, send it to me. Um, and I'm gonna pay this for it. This is the DM. At uh, Sean underscore T underscore. DM me on yeah. Instagram. Uh, it's the one with the blue check. Only one. I never ask you for money. Go. Okay. Go ahead. with the check. Um, but I wanted to know. So before I heard earlier that Olivia said. Um, before you met Sean, you had never heard of polygamy or anything like this. So what about the way that Sean said it to you or pitched it to you did got you into it? Uh, it was the fact of honestly working with other people, also working with other powerful women, all, all being on the same mission. Me being a business owner, like I know with now dealing with a team, how valuable it is for everyone to be on the same mission, Sheesh. on the same program and just be aligned and just go. Like I know how powerful it is. So with all of the queens and the women um, being on the same path and us as a family, I know that we can reach heights that are unimaginable to 99.9% .9 of people. Um, and that's really what I want. I've always, I, I haven't really grown up in a huge family and I just know how powerful teamwork is. I've always desired it ever since I was like little. So, you know, it's always, it's always been something on my mind. I just, it really just connected the dots with having to be polygamy for me. Is it really polygamy or like y'all really in a relationship or are y'all really? Cause like for it to be on TikTok like this, it really just come across as y'all got together. Y'all were able to get attention and now y'all able to drive traffic to whatever it is y'all selling. <laughs> Kiss it don't mean that it's a relationship. I, I can kiss anybody. I, I'll ask you a question. Just answer the question. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Well, that's all from me. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Can't ask You're you. Just a bad, right? I like yeah. that. Let's bring it to two million, guys. Two million. And I will find the next guest. The next guest. The next guest. <laughs> People are fenty. Rika Two million likes Okay, sure, sure, go ahead and 2 million likes, and let's bring on the next guest. <laughs> okay, we are here. Okay, let's see. All right, Melodic. CEO, let's bring you on. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. Can, Can you turn your camera on? Yeah, definitely. One second. One quick second. Hello. What's going on there? Wait. Hello. Okay. 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 So how y'all doing? <clears throat> yeah, it's a little quiet. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, someone asked what I was eating. This is my edamame, my secret sauce. I'll teach y'all how to make it. Um, someone else asked about the lip combo the other day. I forgot to upload it. I'm so sorry. I will. Okay, what's happening? Jesus Christ, I don't know. Anyway, if I were to cook a dessert tomorrow for Easter, what would y'all want me to cook? Am I tired? No, I slept great. I slept great. And I don't have to go to work. Let's talk. Carrot cake. Oh, I haven't done carrot cake before. Brownies. <laughs> Excuse me, hard pass. Um, canceled. Mm hmm Okay. Apparently, that's a thing now. Um... Hmm. 
Am I still in the Navy? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I am. Adriana, I love your profile pic, by the way. Somebody said, say your favorite color. My favorite color is emerald. Yes, yes, yeah. Banana pudding, one of my favorites. And my grandma cooks it from scratch. So I might be doing that. I can always do peach cobbler. I do peach cobbler all the time. Um, tiramisu. I like that. That's bougie. I like that. Cupcakes. I like a little confetti. Maybe some red velvet. Especially a vegan option. Green looks beautiful on you. Thank you so much. She needs more like you no more. It's okay. I understand. I also do not ask to be uh, liked. You know? I'm sorry. Somebody said something about my ponytail. I was going to do my hair today, but it just, it wasn't, I didn't feel like it. I was lazy. Anyway, um, what am I doing with my hair? I'm going to do a bowl or goddess locks, whatever you prefer to call them. Not locks, um, braids with my natural hair. Natural hair is given. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. What else? Why am I so reserved? Um I need, when, when we're on live, I need like clear questions. Some people want to rant, you know what I'm saying? And um, like my attention span is so short, by the time we get to the end of your statement, I can't even remember the beginning. Um, so it needs to be like a dialogue, a constant dialogue for me to actually be engaged. Um, so usually either I'm back here listening or chilling also. Um, Um, either there needs to be a constant dialogue or something of that nature. And then, um, excuse me. Back. I need to go. I need so, to go. what else are y'all doing for Easter? Somebody's hitting my phone, man. Going to the crib. Someone called the police. What are y'all calling the police for? Okay. Are we so, adding somebody or no? Yep. We are 
Okay, let's see. Khadija. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Nay Balenci? Or right, natural just, boss? Just, yes, just yes, we can. Hello? Hello, natural boss. Hello? Oh gosh, you guys need to like put your mics on. Hello? Okay, well. Frankie. Hello. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to get my mic on. Okay. Um, oh, now, now can we you see me. You. We can see you. We can hear you. Hey, what's, what's up, guys? Where are you from? We're doing good. What's your name? Where are you from? Um, my name's Frankie. I am from Virginia. I'm from Richmond, though. Nice. Cool. Okay, where'd you first see us, Frankie? I think I saw y'all on my, my AirPods just died too. That's crazy. I'm about to go in my room. But I think I saw y'all on my, can you plug the light up? I'm with my sister, sorry. I saw y'all on my For You page, I believe. And then I just kind of like fell down the rabbit hole. So now I'm here. <laughs> How, How a week doing? ago, a week ago or like two weeks ago or more? Girl, I'm deep. I, at this <laughs> point, I'm the third. I'm the third. Hello, how you doing? Um. <laughs> so... First of all, how are y'all tonight? How are y'all doing? What's the vibe? How are y'all feeling? Feeling good. That's good. Okay. Um, actually, let me get my paper because I, I wrote down a couple questions. It's just yeah. stuff I had to ask about. I feel like people come up here and it's just like a hate. Like It's like they want to create a hate train and it's like it's weird. So I don't want to do that to y'all. Let's keep it real cute. I'm going to get into y'all though. I'm going to get into y'all though, but we're going to keep it cute. Amen. Amen. Okay, <laughs> so, um, my first question is, I saw the other night that you said, um, you guys have the same anniversary. So when you decided to make things official with Olivia, were you on deployment, Shanice? Oh no, I can't hear you guys. Wait. Oh wait, do you hear us? Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, okay, okay. Good. So you said you were on deployment? Okay, so Sean, while you, while your girlfriend was on deployment, defending your country, <laughs> um, you decided to make things official with another woman. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, interesting. So my next question is, I know people say like a lot of stuff about how you are... 30 and um olivia's 20 or whatever i mean i feel like if that's what she likes if that's what works for y'all that's cool whatever cool but i think that i don't think it's grooming i think that you do the same thing that you do with olivia to shanice i just think it's more detrimental to olivia because she's younger and she's more impressionable i think that shanice is older and she's already been through her like 20s she's just already you know she's whatever but i think it's more detrimental to olivia i don't think that was a question that was just a statement whatever anyway i wanted to say something about the sure what do you oh. think i do that's detrimental to olivia no i just think that she's more impressionable about the stuff that you tell her because i know that i'm 26 so i know that when i was 20 um I was like, a guy could tell me anything and I would just be like, okay, like whatever. Like, you know, it wasn't a thing. But I know that now, even at 26, I'm like, I'm not going to go for as much as I would have at 20. So I think that 
the things you say. And even if she was with someone else, like she's more impressionable at this age, if that makes sense. Huh? What things do I do that's detrimental to her? Um, I think that when I said detrimental, I just mean that it's going to stick with her more. It's going to make her who she's going to be when she gets like older, because I've dealt with people when I was a certain age and it kind of turned me into the person that I am today, especially when you're in a relationship, how you guys are. This is something that's going to like follow her for a long time. So I think that since she's so young and this is like one of her, she said like her first like real relationship, it's it's going to be detrimental to her, even if it was someone with someone else. But I just think that the circumstance and like the way it's happening is just kind of that's y'all's business okay so my next question i wanted to say something about your dad because the situation with the dad my dad actually like died in the military so i don't have a dad um i don't have anyone that if if seeing i'm sorry who's that olivia shanice's or mine's so the situation with olivia's dad the live situation the thing that just happened um, I kind of that's something that I kind of like really like looked into because, like I said, my father passed away. So I feel like whenever I see like a dad stepping up for a daughter, it's something that I'm kind of just like, oh, like I wish I had that because I don't have someone that in that situation would have been able to stand up for me like that would have been able to say, hey, this is my daughter. Da, da, da. And I don't think that any I don't think that your Olivia, I don't think that your dad said anything wrong about you guys i think what happened was certain stuff that you say your dad you called your family out you called your mom out saying that you guys were like poor or low income or whatever you had said and i think that your dad was just like honestly responding i don't think that it was appropriate for sean or let me ask in a question with sean why do you think that it was appropriate for you to put your two cent in and speak on what you thought her dad should do or shouldn't do when it came to his daughter right spoke on that i'm sorry you're right i shouldn't have spoke on that okay well let's talk about what just happened in the room when you guys all left because i think that's what we really all want to get into yeah so i just had something really important to tell her and i told her okay because it looked like you got mad about the fact that a dude got brought up here because i know that your energy is always kind of different with the um, when a male's up here like you see how you're very like you're just sitting like this you don't really like you don't seem interested in what i'm saying but when a guy's up here you're like yes this is dylan we love dylan shout out to dylan everybody follow <laughs> dylan but when it's a female you're like um anyway child so like you just don't care yeah, i mean i see why you you would like say that and perceive that but like earlier i went live with like a bunch of guys and it was like we had like a great conversation for like hours so i don't i wouldn't say that i like don't like talking to guys like that's that's just not true no you do like talking to guys i don't think that you like talking to women because i feel like women ask more like i mean you don't you don't like talking to guys because guys, sorry, I missaid that, but you don't like talking to guys because guys call you out. I think men intimidate you. I think that you don't like being called out on your BS. I just think that that's how it is. So if it's a guy that's agreeing with you, you're very like, yes, per, but if it's a woman, you're quick to play your song and like kick a woman off. And it's like, I, I, like. So let me just say, I don't, so I do or I don't like talking to guys on the live, which one is it? No, what I'm saying is, okay, so I guess you knew Dylan and Gabe very much. He was sitting in the same house as y'all. Let me, let me, let me, let me clear up what I said. Hold on. Can I, I'm sorry. Let me clear up what I said. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, the thing is, I'm like a golden retriever. Like, talk to me really slow and use really small words. You did say that. You did say that. Simple. Easy. Okay. 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 So, when you was talking to Dylan, it gave very much y'all was um sitting in the same house like he was in the back or whatever or y'all live in the same building i'm just telling you what it looked like sean that's all i'm saying it looked like y'all was sitting there or he was down the hall or something like that and i guess you was nice to him because you knew him clearly because when he came up he said it's me like y'all had <laughs> talked about it like he was a paid it's actor me. like you know like it gave like you know it's me sean you told me to come up here chat but you know so it's like yeah you were nicer to dylan but it's like what about the live i did with kev and ricardo i think i'm saying that right what about the live i did with kev some of y'all know him as unk what about that? We had a great conversation. Olivia's dad was there. Like, it was a lot of people there. Aunt Karen came there. We had some other people there. And it was a live that I was on for literally like a few hours. So the fact that I don't like to talk to guys, I just, uh, on the live, I feel like I completely disagree with that. 
Okay, I, I could be wrong. It's just what it gives. Um, I think I did see the live earlier. You was on like a panel, and um, I think I did see that one. So I'm just saying, as far as like when these lives come on, when it's like women up here that's asking you certain other questions, it just kind of goes a different way. Anyway, um, so how long were you and Shanice together before? And these might have been questions that's already asked. I'm just I don't I, I might have missed it. But how long were you and Shanice together before Olivia joined? Hey, Shanice. <laughs> mm -mm, you don't know? You're about here, but she, she, Olivia didn't join our relationship. Me and Olivia have a separate relationship. I just want to make that like clear. Okay. Um. And so, what made you ask to? What What made you want to start? Like, what made you interested in the poly or want to become like get a second girlfriend? Where did that come from? I got tired of being. I got tired of being in monogamous relationship. No, I, no, no, no. I got tired of like breaking people's hearts, man. That's just a very tough feeling. And I think, I think, I think the worst, the second worst feeling in the world is getting cheated on. And the worst feeling in the world is cheating on somebody. And me, myself, I did a lot of self-development once I got into entrepreneurship. I was like, I don't want to have that effect on women. That's not what I want. But I knew just for me personally, monogamy does not work. I knew where I was like going and I wouldn't even want to put myself in a position to fail my future family or anything like that. And for me, I would rather be honest and be disliked than be liked and like tell a lie. So for me, I was like, hey, I got to live my truth. And as a man, I was just like, hey, this is what I want. It doesn't mean I can do whatever I want. Obviously, there's rules and boundaries, but I just got tired of breaking people's hearts, man. And um, So yeah. when you say you was breaking people's hearts, does that mean people were pursuing you? And because you were in a relationship with your beautiful queen, Shanice, you were turning them down? Because what do you mean you was tired of breaking hearts? I really uh, had monogamous relationships with amazing women. And I failed in the past due to me whatever it is not being a great leader um or like cheating so i'm gonna i'm gonna redirect us amen um what made so i'm just confused you 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 say you a golden retriever i'm a chihuahua you lost me um you said that you got tired of breaking hearts how if you were in a monogamous relationship with a woman were you breaking hearts is it because have, people wanted had, you and you I had, I had failures, you know what I mean? Like, I, it's not the first relationship I've been in. I've, I've had failures. I feel that everything, I feel that every different type of relationship, girlfriend, I feel that a marriage, I, I feel that like so many different things. And it's not that like I went into those relationships like, oh, I want to break this girl's heart. Like, and I just could not understand like, why am I doing this? And I think a lot of that was a lack of necessarily discipline or a lack of like leadership on my end. Cause the way I view women, I think 99.9% .9 of the women on the planet either are wifey material or have the potential to be wifey material. It just takes the right leader to bring that out of them. So, so for me, I look at when I have problems in relationships that I just need to be a better leader, a better this. And that's something that this poly relationship has reinforced enforced to me that things do go wrong. And I just, I feel like it's pushing me to another level of leadership and accountability and just like everything. And sometimes it is a frustrating process, right? Like we have difficult conversations, I would say, but like it's definitely something that pushes us, that challenges us. And at the end of the day, it makes us better. Okay. So you were cheating on Shanice and you felt never, as though instead- Never, I never cheated on Shanice. Actually, I never even got into a relationship with like Shanice. It was like we had never even like really made it like official. Um, it was just like one of those things that like I had great women at that time that I was dating that I just couldn't like commit to and I didn't know why. And I was like, I felt like I would be missing out on something. So it's just one of those things. Like when guys sit up here and play these games, like you've been in a situation ship or you dated him for seven years. Yeah. It does not take seven years to figure out if he wants to marry you or not. That's oh. cap. He just feels like I'm, he's just, he just feels like he's going to be given. He feels like he's going to be giving right. up something. Right. I'm literally trying to speak yeah. to it. And I know it's so hard to understand because you've never been a man. You never walked this planet as a man. But guys be knowing guys be knowing if six in six months, if they would marry somebody or not. Sit up straight. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> sit my sit my ass, sit my skinny ass up. 
Now listen, you just told me that you was with this girl for a year. Now you saying you was not with it just kind of happened so what y'all was dating and then she just kind of moved in like olivia did or you just was like um so is we doing this and you i mean why you say you and that girl wanted no relationship because we wasn't it like i hadn't made the committed decision to be like oh you're my girlfriend um, when so when did you have you ever when did you i'm confused now yeah, of course i did so we um so what I was mean, the point of saying that i'm confused Cause I just feel like you're not, <laughs> you, okay. I asked you, cause I got it written down on this little, um, paper. Amen. You said, I asked you what made you ask for another woman. Your answer to me was you were tired of breaking hearts. I'm still, I don't even, I can't even move on to my next question. Cause I'm still trying to figure out what Shanice, let me ask you something. Amen. At what point did you, she said, baby, please don't ask me shit. <laughs> um, at what point did you think that y'all were in a relationship? Cause it's the math ain't math, and I remember the other day y'all say August fifteenth. That's both y'all anniversary. Love that for y'all, Bezos. Mwah. But what? Like, why did he just say that? I'm confused. She don't know me, Olivia. Do you know, baby? <laughs> Their relationship. I cannot speak on that. Mm. Mm, hard tea. Hard tea. Well, I guess we'll never know why Sean was breaking hearts and what made him ask for another woman. I would, I, I got from that. You said you was breaking hearts because you. It, it sounded like you was either cheating or you was turning women. All the you said, you said you get some of the baddest. You was screaming and spitting into the phone. You said you get the baddest, the best, the baddest, and you got to turn them down. So I'm like, maybe you wanted to get into a a p polygamy or a situation where it was like you could have other women, so you didn't have to turn the best this bitch is down no more you feel me so i'm just trying to figure out i guess we'll never know <laughs> hey man um olivia hey olivia i don't like how they come for you like that that shit is weird to me i i said i don't like how they come for you like that like you that's weird i think pe some people can be really mean and they just say stuff because they projecting so i don't like that i'm not about to get up here and bully nobody but i did want to ask you um i guess you really just answered that when you decided that you wanted to go poly i guess just when he introduced it to you or when did you when did you realize that i'm i'm confused about the whole story about how y'all met it very much has been the same since my good good sis is getting in trouble in her emerald damn it it was something i said um <laughs> what did you what when he pre okay you when you first went out there you said you had a linkedin account what was your linkedin account about and inform me like enlighten me on what linkedin really is break it down for me because I, what LinkedIn I, is? that's why i asked you baby don't piss me off <laughs> no, okay so no, no no i was like i i didn't i just didn't know where like it, it was related to me but i'll answer the question yeah it's just like a platform a social media platform where it's more professional and you know people network on there um yeah and okay just, so like, what were you so what was your business um i'm sorry go ahead that's, that's from my understanding maybe people use it for different reasons so what was your like business like what was your professional business on your linkedin account so I started my um, company, Two Cents Finance, and it is a financial services and insurance firm. So basically, I was just really like trying to get everywhere and just connect with business people. So basically, I was just really like trying to get. Ooh. Is everything okay? Is that Am I here? Can y'all hear me? You are here. Yes. Is everything okay? Yes. Yeah, somebody called me. Somebody called me. Don't boot me. Somebody called me. I put that phone on D and D. Don't boot me. Go ahead. We got you. Okay. Um. But yeah, I was just like trying to expand my network because I knew that was very valuable in business. Doesn't matter what you do. Okay. So you were freshly out of high school when you made this LinkedIn, correct? Stay with me. It's all gonna make sense. I'm sorry. Yes, that is correct. Yes. So you probably learned because I did DECA. I don't know if y'all well, you from Virginia. I don't know if y'all y'all had that in Fairfax, but I, I was in something like DECA. So we kind of yeah, I, I graduated with a little uh, but um, they teach you about stuff like that. So that's something that you learned in high school and then you took advantage of that opportunity, like something that you saw as opportunity to create that 
LinkedIn account to get your business started. That I'm assuming that's how that happened for you. I learned from just being, because I was actually already working in financial services and insurance. I was actually working as pretty much an assist, assistant to like my mentor. Um, so okay. that's basically that. I saw like how people did business from there because I was like in the office all the time. And I saw you really just have to talk to people to have a successful business and like tell them what you do. So I was like, I'm going to build my network and I'm just going to see where it goes. So that's what got you um, interested in that because you had a mentor. Okay, that's cool. So when Sean hit you up on your LinkedIn account, what was his approach to you? Was he trying to help you with your business or how did that happen? Yeah, he was just saying just like a little bit, you know, like, hey, um, just wanted to connect with you. And I was like, okay, well, and he was like, book a call here. And then I was like, okay, let's just book the call. I don't know who this guy is. But right, so you went from not like, knowing who that guy was to getting on an airplane, hey, amen. How did that happen? How did you? How did you? How did a stranger get you on a plane? Let's back it up. What do you mean airplane? R repeat. That I mean again. they be in the sky, right? So sometimes I know they got like Delta. They got. Uh, I'm, I understand the plan part. I did not get the question though. What oh, do you so mean? how did you go from not knowing that guy to him getting you on a plane to his private residence? Okay, so amazing question, fantastic. We hit it off so well on the phone. We didn't see each other. We don't know much about each other. All we knew was business wise. We had a business conversation. Hit it off with, the, with the, our personalities. He was like, let's add each other on Instagram. I wanna stay connected with you. I was like, fantastic, perfect. And then from there, we stayed connected on Instagram. And like, you can pretty much stay connected with people on social media. That's kind of how they like built it. So, so y'all yeah, built a friendship from Instagram DM. You said what? So y'all built a friendship via Instagram DM. Yeah, like every single, like, first I posted something on my story and I needed a mentor for a certain area. And then he, he, he referred somebody to me. And then from there, he just saw all the things I was posting. He was supporting everything that I was doing. Super like encouraging. And his, his, his mission was always to push people to their potential. And he shows up for people when he, when he says that. So he yeah. just did that. Like, honestly, we just went back and forth. And from right. there, we created friendship. We're sending video messages, voice memos, all of that stuff. Yeah, so. And Shanice, did you know that um, they was, all this was going on, baby? What was going on? Did you know that they was video chatting and sending voicemails and motivating each other and purples and rainbows? Mm -hmm. That's so. Rainbows, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um. I Are you okay? After, after you know, they had became friends, and she came out uh, while we were um, dating. Ooh, well, see, because now we don't know, right? I'm with you. Go ahead, because so he I'm, don't know. I'm gonna make it perfectly clear. Oh wait, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Shanice. Right, I just I wanna, I wanna wait, make something you, perfectly clear. Yes, I understand. Olympic. So, with that being said, me and wait Shanice. Up, wait up. Me and Shanice were dating. I failed to, as a man, step up and make a committed decision, committed decision to say, hey, this is my woman, because I felt like I would be lacking something. And I felt like I would be putting myself in a position to fail. I did not want to say, hey, this is my girlfriend at the time, even though I really was not dating any other girls like that. I got afraid to like put the title on it because I felt like I would be missing out on something. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew I couldn't like in my heart commit at that time because I felt like I would be setting myself up for failure. And for me, I'm not finna lie to somebody, right? And then I discovered polygyny and that's what allowed me to embrace everything. So now I'm not afraid of commitment. And now I feel like I'm more- I respect that that was a vulnerable moment. So I wanna make it like perfectly clear uh, when it when it like comes to that, so. Okay, that was a vulnerable moment. Now, how long were you in that phase with Shanice before you made it official. So I'm assuming August 15th was that y'all's anniversary and y'all were together mm -hmm. for a year. But how long before that August 15th were you, you know in limbo? And Shan yeah, the whole like the whole time pretty much. The reason why I say that is because like, even though, like I say, that's our anniversary, that's the anniversary of like the day we met. Cause mm -hmm. pretty much when we met, it's like we were in a relationship. We just like did not have like that actual title. But to me, like, I'm like, yo, like pretty much that's when we like met because I pretty much stopped dating all the other girls 
that I was dating when I met Shanice. So they just all kind of like went away. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of girls that be like hanging out with guys in a situation ship. And the reason why the guy's afraid to commit is because he's like, man, I don't want to feel like I'm, I know y'all get tired of that. You wonder why a guy, you, you got y'all mess around four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months and no relationship. Why y'all messing around with each other for six years, no ring? It's because he's not even afraid of commitment, but he's just fighting his nature mm -hmm. to be with one woman. It's natural. It does not take long to hit it off with somebody. You know if the energy's right, if the vibe is right, like you can really build like with somebody. Is every relationship gonna be perfect and work? No, but I, at least I like, that. Hey Sean. I feel like at least practicing poly, people would be and I'm not trying to convince anybody, but I'm just telling me, like it's very easy now to actually commit to people, mm -hmm. right? Hey, you're right. forty, um, hey you're not. Right. So Shanice, like I was Oh, go ahead, baby. Uh, to answer your question, we were not together until um, Olivia and like they became romantic. Basically, until I got back from the deployment. Also, this is new tea. I ain't never. Okay, now you give me something to work with. So y'all were not in okay. a. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was not locked in until you got back and and Olivia was there. And that's when he was like, baby, I'm going to go. I want this. I just want I, we, me and you go do what it do. He didn't say that until Olivia came in the picture. So y'all hadn't discussed being in a relationship prior to Olivia coming. We discussed being in a poly relationship prior to Olivia. Olivia wasn't the was the first person to um, be solidified. Got him. So when you say solidify, solidify, solidify. Sorry, it's real early in the morning here. <laughs> you mean it was somebody else before these lives and all this stuff started? Yes. Okay. So dating. Oh. Okay, so I know that you use August 15th as your, um, because we getting somewhere, we break, wait, ooh, oh, God, I think I didn't got, no, yeah. shoot, mm -mm. Uh, don't no, play the song, Sean. <laughs> don't play the song, Sean, please, I'm not done, okay, so, <laughs> what happened with the last girl, she just wasn't a fit for the mission and the dream? We're not, we're not focused on listen, Okay, listen, I respect listen. that. I respect it. We don't even got to get into it. I respect it. We can leave that right there. That's, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so do you, I know you use August 15th as your anniversary date. Do you guys have a actual date for when you guys made it official or do you guys just share August 15th and just make that the thing? Make it what thing? I mean, we haven't been together in for one year, so I would I would see when when we pass the year mark. Okay, so this August fifteenth will make it a year. She he, Sean is in distress. I am bombastic. I am sorry. I didn't come up here to try to piss you off. I know that I don't want to get nobody in trouble. I didn't. I didn't got my girls in trouble. <sighs> okay, Sean. Let's go. I'm gonna go to you now. <laughs> um, I didn't. I uh. So Sean, what's your job title? Um. A bum. Yeah. That is, you know what, and 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 I'm glad you said that. So when you <laughs> say bum, amen. When I think of bum, I think of somebody that's just on the street. I'm glad you said it, so we didn't have to, like, you know what I mean, like somebody that don't have nothing going for themselves. And and it's so crazy. You preach about this mission and this dream, and you want to help people. I wasn't even being funny when I asked you that. I I really know people that have the credit scores and everything you're looking for that can't seem to reach you and stuff. So I'm asking legitimate questions so I can spread the word, baby bird. <laughs> but since he gave bum, we can move along. Olivia, what you say your job title is? I run my own financial services and insurance firm. You, so what's your job title? Not where do you work? Oh, yeah. So I would, I would consider myself like a holistic financial planner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you feel as though, do you still do that business? Because I know in one of the other lives, you had said that you kind of stepped away from your business and um you you weren't interested or something you said along those lines anymore um, I, I am still 
doing, I am still doing that business. And for all millennial women that want to increase their wealth by 20%, DM well to my at. <laughs> so two, two, set, two cents well, right here. Yeah, that's the one she got right there, Sean. She pointed to it. She did good. I'm about to say, not you said you was a bum and now it's her time to shine. Now you got words, bum. Wait a minute. Then was your words. Not what it was. He's just trying to clarify. He just playing. I love how y'all speak for each other. Amen. Clear communication. We could all use clear communication. Right. I hate the fact that I caught Sean in a pissy ass mood because i was really excited to get up here and i i literally have put your notifications on for the live to get up here and now i'm up here he's scrubbing his head and scratching his neck and and, bar and shaking his leg you know it's really unbecoming it's not very southern hospitality of you but i digress um shanice you said you was going to teach us about that sauce on them edamame noodles or them edamame beans what was it baby that shit looked it good as hell y'all was <laughs> I want to sign my damn self. I'm sitting here hungry looking at y'all. What was that brown sauce, a little soy sauce? I got you. I want it now. Now? No. <laughs> what? I gotta, I gotta, it has to be for everybody because everybody's not going to be on the live. It's 52,000 of us. We don't, we all need it. It's enough of us. Amen. No, all 52,000 don't follow me. I do. Okay, I'm going to DM you separate about that. Where are you going? Wait, stink. Don't. Sean, I was playing. <laughs> okay, anyway, so I want to ask you girls. Um, I'll, I'll ask you first, Olivia. What does your day to day? <laughs> it says Sean hanging up. <laughs> Sean hanging up. Hey, so what does your day to day look like? Um, you said kick her, kick your mama. Hey, Amen. Olivia, what does your day to day look like? Like, do you go to work every day? Like, what does your day to day look like? Oh, okay. <laughs> Where they jump out the window, Olivia? What does your day to day look? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> from home. You work from home. Are you okay? He's getting the gun. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm answering the question. No, I just can't hear you. You said you work from home. Yes, I do. Okay, so. So you just work all like like give me like a when you wake up to when you guys get on live. What does that look like for you? I wake up um, and basically I go to my first meeting, which is my team meeting, um, see what everyone's intentions are for today, and they produce. And for me, I'm just basically booking calls with people, setting appointments, and setting appointments so I can help people with their financial plan. Okay. And Sean, what does your day to day look like? Uh, sit around and uh, beg for money on the streets all day. You know, I knew you looked familiar. I did. <laughs> um, Shanice, what does your day to day look like? Um, wake up, do you know military things, and uh, either I'm at a, at the hospital or I'm doing admin work or I'm with my fellow sailors and come home you know make hook okay. i want to ask you something sean because you seem very upset right now you're pacing and you're giving me very negative energy um you said that you were a bum you said you sit on the street and ask money people for money all day what was the energy change for you i noticed when that dude joined it seemed like everything changed oh i wasn't done talking though damn it yeah, I, I wasn't done with my question, though. I just wanted to get the question out because I genuinely want to know. What was the energy shift for you? Um, because something happened. And then uh, Olivia went to the back. And then you went. And then you came and grabbed the phones. And then Shanice was talking to us about if she was going to make carrot cake or brownies. And it was very... Uh, as as a um, watcher, I was concerned. These people said they was calling the police. So what what was your energy change? Man, the thing is this, dude. I and it's no excuse. You're right. I shouldn't have that energy. But sometimes being an entrepreneur can be incredibly difficult. It's incredibly challenging. Oh, brother, this guy. Thanks. I'm just kidding. Oh, I don't understand. I don't. I don't. I don't understand why you asked me a question and then you just cut me off. You just you. You're not answering. You that was so outlandish. But you're not letting me land my plane. Like if you want to sit. Okay, I'm sorry. 
Then like push the narrative, like do whatever you want to do. Man. No, I'm not or, trying to. I asked you what was your energy I mean, shift. You said you being an entrepreneur. You have no interest in hearing my answer, and that's fine. And I respect. Okay, that. no, that's not true. I'm sorry. Go ahead, give your answer. It just you were deflecting. I felt I'm like because to, how am I deflecting when all I'm saying is that I bust my butt 17 hours a day, and sometimes things can get a little frustrating. Like I go so hard, you guys could never like imagine. And sometimes entrepreneurship can be incredibly frustrating. You guys have no idea. Like, you guys have no idea. Somebody could have just called me and told me my grandma died. You guys have no idea what's going on, but you guys just make these assumptions and like, you guys have no idea. But you're right, I shouldn't have bad energy and that's something that I need to fix and handle. And it's nothing personal to you. It's just, it's just very, 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 very tough. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Okay, so um, here's the thing. I never said you shouldn't have bad energy, but you have to understand in this profession or this whatever y'all are doing with this, you open you open you're opening your life up to fifty five point five thousand people right now. So you can't expect the perceptions that we get are clear, and all of us typically say the same thing in the comments when I'm reading them. So it wasn't. You guys, you guys even, the thing is, you guys don't even have like intelligent conversations, and I'm not calling you guys unintelligent. But a lot of the times you guys don't let people answer. And I'm not trying to sit up here and like claim to be perfect. You guys just get up here, you shout, and so she say this, she say that. And that's cool, that's fine, but it's just like, I don't Okay, know. did either three of you feel like I was being you're disrespectful gonna, tonight? If you're gonna ask a question, at least like this is like the answer. That's like my Okay, I, let me, I just wanted to get my thought out. So let me just pause and say, do either three of y'all feel like I was being disrespectful to y'all tonight? I feel like your questions did insinuate and in, yes, disrespect. So I would say yes, yes. Okay, and can you tell me which question you felt was disrespectful, Olivia, so I can clear that up for you? I honestly just think any question where you, well, you were asking about like our character and also I would say for him as well, you were asking questions that in like, Oh, so you're this. Oh, so you're that. Um, in Wait, terms do you have of, a specific like, question, sweetheart? It's not about the question. I think it's about the underlying principles. Like for me, I don't feel like you ask a question that's super disrespectful, but I feel like just the way you communicate to us is not the most respectful. I'm not trying to say you're like a bad person or not. That's that's not what I'm saying. For me, I like I just feel like the whole process of entrepreneurship can be very, 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 very frustrating and like another thing like it's just insane to see how destructive people are on like tiktok it's kind of crazy but here's the thing though like i said the it point to the point i was making before you interrupted me it comes with the territory see here's the thing i'm a black man in america and i'm not trying to play the victim card but every day every day in america we're seeing black men get unalived we have whatever the heck people even if they think it's a joke to like call the police to like kick in somebody's door what happens if what happens if i'm drinking my water and they're like oh snap he's got a weapon and then they just take me out due to like a mistake like and, th and then what like so the thing is just like people just don't realize like how messed up that can be i mean like and the thing is we've seen the dark side of it like the whole thing with her dad the reason a big reason on why her dad feels some type of way is because people have just straight up told her dad lies oh i'm keeping her in the house oh i'm doing this oh i'm putting hands like it's just like it's crazy how people will see stuff we've seen people i've seen people threaten to make up false allegations i've seen all type of stuff and it's just like why are you guys so upset at somebody who's never asked you guys for anything and the only thing we do is troll people that troll us that's why well, so, i'm glad you brought the situation that's, with not me. Really, that's not even really why i'm like upset or whatever it has literally nothing to do with that like that like you guys don't know what's going on like i said somebody just could have called me and told me my grandma died yeah i have no idea what's going on with me you have absolutely no idea you guys only see you guys you guys only see what you see on here no because if i was to say something like that they're gonna blow up my grandma like they're gonna blow up people and be like blah 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 that's why i was trying to that's why i was trying to talk but you interrupted me i didn't get to make my point to what i was saying what i was saying was you open your life up to tens of thousands of people every day. So when you when we're on live, we're looking at you what's happening live. What we saw was that 
She came, she whispered something to you. You made a face like her breath stunk. Then the next thing we knew, she was chewing gum. But she, she came and whispered something to you. You was like, what? And looked irritated. Then she brought a dude up. And when she brought the dude up, it's like you got mad. And you came on, you got up yourself to hurry up and got him off. And then y'all walked off. You came around, grabbed the phones. And then it was like, so yeah, very well. That could have happened. Your grandmother, which I hope that didn't happen to you. Something very serious could have happened. You could just be stressed off from your day. But this is not the energy you gave all night. You didn't give this energy until um, the, the dude CEO or whoever had came up and then you hurried up and got him off and you walked off. So I'm saying when you get, open your lot, your life to this many people, that's, I mean, this is what we're looking at. This is what it gives. Like, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah, when people ask questions about it but anyway, since you brought her dad up, I wanted to say you said something about what father goes online and bashes his daughter. I don't think that oh, her dad... Yeah, hold on i wish i had somebody yeah. to tell you to be quiet when i'm talking like you got olivia i wish i had an olivia to be like hold on hold on i'm done i'm not i'm talking but, but go he's ahead not, he's I'm not talking. gonna talk about it he was trying to say he's not gonna talk about that so you can okay. continue with the question, I, I, it's okay if he doesn't want to hold on here's a here's a beautiful thing it's okay if he doesn't want to answer the question but i'm still going to say what i was going to say he could have respectfully been like we're not going to talk about that but i'm gonna get my shit off because i've been waiting to talk to y'all respectfully that was then the most respectful way when i just said that I, I really have because sometimes i do read the comments like damn they be frying them all that's the unnecessary but it is some stuff that has questions so all i was saying about the dad thing was i don't think that because i watched the live i i knew i wanted to come up here so i knew i had to get have my shit together um I don't think that your dad, Olivia, was bashing you. <clears throat> I think that your dad was called out, like I said earlier. Your whole family was called out, and I felt like he responded. Just like y'all respond when people say stuff to you or when people say stuff to y'all. Y'all took it to the internet, so your dad took it to the internet. And for Sean, I, my father passed away when I was a child. Hold on, hold on. Let me get this off, bro. Let's respect each other. Let's respect each other. My father died in the military when I was eight years old. So I don't know what it's like, like I said, to have a man care enough or to stand up and be like, look, you know, this is my daughter, bro. Let's keep it. You know what I mean? I don't have that. Of course, I have uncles or I've had father figures, but I've never had a direct dad. And Olivia, I know that you say your dad was not really there. He was sporadically in your life, but he has to have some type of care to even speak up on you or you being his daughter. You can say it's for clout. You can say it's for whatever, but it has to be for some reason. Um, I felt like he was called out. He brought it to the Internet because y'all have had multiple conversations about your family on the Internet. So it's like. Um, you don't have to speak on it, but I wish the day would come that a, a, a ninja would ever part his lips to ever may God rest my father's soul. But my mother, anybody like that, that I care about, because that's not what we're going to do, period. So I feel like your ideals may be a little bit different. We have all been blinded by love, but I don't think it's too much love that would ever make me. You know what I mean? And it sounds like your daddy love you. But like I said, I don't know your personal life. I'm a viewer. This is a show and I'm just watching and you open the floor up for us to communicate. So that's all that that was. Amen. I just want to say, first of all, I feel like what you're saying, a lot of this is correct. I personally don't feel like it was my place to really speak on um, Olivia and her dad, how her dad feels. And hopefully I hope we can have a conversation man to man. Um, so I just want to apologize for any disrespect because that's never my intention. Obviously, when you know better, you do better. I remember having to talk with Kevin. You guys go check him out. Some of y'all may know him at all. Um, and he really brought a lot of like enlightenment uh, to like the situation and like how I'm supposed to like approach that. Cause like I said, I am a work in progress. I'm not perfect. I'm not above criticism. I'm not above taking in new information and new data. So uh, I just want to say, I don't feel like it was really like my place to speak on Olivia and Olivia's dad. I still personally, you know, wish that me and Olivia's dad can like handle things off of social media. Uh, I don't know everything that was said, but I just, you know, yeah. Hope that one day we get to talk. That's it. So at the end of the day, like, that's kind of like you know in between like you know Olivia and like her, her pops. It's not really like my right. Place. No, that's that's facts. That's that takes a lot of maturity uh, maturity to be able to say that because like somebody said. Um, I know that this is the person you want to be with forever, Olivia, but you never know where life will take you. And Sean or not, that's going to be your daddy for the rest of your life. Um, I just have two more things to say, but um.
Olivia, I see something that your dad is going doing a live tomorrow saying that God is a jealous God. Do you have any, like, are you worried about that? How do you feel about him? Are you worried he's going to, like, say something? Uh, do you feel like, how do you feel about this whole live your dad is doing? Have you even talked to your dad since these whole lives have been going on? Yeah, I have talked. I have talked to my dad briefly. Um, now, what do I think about him going live tomorrow? At the end of the day, he's going to do what he thinks is best for this situation. Um, am I worried about it? No, but I really would like to bring caution to people that who is the like who is the source like i am the one that is going to tell you things perception it is not the truth so i recommend if you're gonna watch the live whatever that it is just realize where the actual who the who the actual source is because a lot of people want to believe other people and not the actual source. And if you want to clarify anything with me, bring it up with me. But other than that, have fun, watch live whatever that it is, but just realize that what people say is just their perception and not 100% the truth because they are not the original source. Okay, speaking of family members, Sean, I saw a, a video that your brother said that you didn't have a hard life. You guys had a very well off life. Um, you always had new cars and you were very well taken care of. You were spoiled, actually, out of your brothers. What do you have to say about that? Because, um... That so-called brother didn't live with me my whole life, so he can only speak on the nine years that, like, he lived with me. He doesn't know the first nine years, so that's just pretty much that. And that's another that's another example of like what I'm talking about that we go through. I mean, it's not really that big of an issue, but the fact that people hit him up, lie to him, and say that I said my father was abusive. I never said that. Same way they hit up Olivia's dad. It's like, oh, Sean's abusing Olivia. No, I'm not. And people just make up lies, and that's a lot of the times why you see these family members that are like coming out and like saying all this stuff because like they're listening to strangers. And one thing I hope that people can learn, whether you agree or disagree. There can be no conflict without a third party. Mm. If but two see, people have, didn't if speak two, on if your two, relationship, two your brother people, didn't speak on your relationship. If two people have an agreement, there can be no conflict without a third party. <laughs> think about it, fellas. Anytime your girl's coming to you with some drama, well, my friends think this. Well, I don't like that we did this in front of this. Well, my parents said this. Well, my such and such. And that's okay. I'm not saying that people shouldn't listen to that. But what I'm saying is, oftentimes when people have a disagreement, it's not even for me to one of them to. It's like from a third party. Most of the time, conflict occurs is from a third party. So what you guys see, and this is the unfortunate part about TikTok, and I don't understand it, but it comes with the territory. I get it. Why would you go and make up lies and tell somebody's friends and family members that somebody said something that they didn't say? Or try to clip something up? Like, what is the point of that? What is the benefit of that? How, how is that going to, like, help anything? I don't know, but people do it every day. Yeah, so, I think that... Okay. Yep. It's kind of... It's, it's it's kind of wild, but it is what it is. I think that, I think that we will drive ourselves crazy trying to figure out why, why other people do what they do. But your brother didn't speak on your relationship. He spoke strictly from what he saw happen while you guys were growing up. I guess he wasn't there for you from ages newborn to nine, but he spoke on what he saw from you growing up. But if your response is that he didn't live with you through your childhood, then I guess, okay... Um, and then the last thing was I also saw a, a TikTok page that showed somebody living in that exact same house as y'all with the same decor, the same paintings, the same everything. Can we clear that up? Because I was confusion. Like he posted in there recently. Like I'm like, do you guys rent this space? Or I'm confused. Here's thing. You probably talking about Eddie Garcia, right? Guy with glasses. I think that was his name. Yeah. So if you go and look under my testimonials. Mm -hmm. You'll see him that, you know, he was able to get to the point where he made $100,000 in 30 days. My point is this. When I say I'm going to mentor somebody, I do everything in my power. Do I open my home up to everybody? No, I do not. But the thing about me, I'm not the guy that just wants to sell somebody, of course, wants to do this. And this is why I give out a lot of free game. I do very, 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 very high level consulting and I will do everything in my power to help somebody change their business and change their life. Because when I say I really care about somebody's success, 
I really do. Because true wealth isn't about money, it's about impact on people. So with that being said, if you were to go to my testimonials, which I have hundreds and those people are tagged, you will see that he is one of my clients. I don't see anything wrong with having one of my clients come to my place, make content, make master mastermind and get advi advice on his business. I see nothing wrong with that. And I will continue to operate that way. Luke Harley is another one. He is one of my clients. He came out as recently as a couple months ago. You guys may have seen him on the live. I, if I'm really messing with somebody and they're really committed to success, I'm open for them coming and masterminding at my place because it's just a total different experience, right? How and I think- How often would you say that he comes to your house? How often would you say he's there? Cause it looked, how often would you say he's there? Well, he lived in San Diego, so I would probably say he would come to my place like once a week. Cause it looked like he lived there for somebody to just be visiting. He spent a lot of time taking photos in your house. It's giving um, us a most people, most people have never seen a place as nice as mine. So when they come here, they all take a photo. Everybody that's ever walked into my place has taken a photo or taken a video because it's probably one of the nicest penthouses that they ever seen in their life. So it's just like if you drive. Okay. It's just like if, you, if it's just like if you drive a Lamborghini. You're gonna have people, kids. You're gonna have other people taking pictures next to it, talking to you about it because it's something that they don't see a lot. So right. if anything, I would think that that would like prove it even more. Yeah. So if you're mentoring these people and they're making 10K a month, why have they not seen anything as nice as your apartment? What do you mean? If these people are uh, on their way to be millionaires and they're making all this money a month, why have they never, why are they in such awe? If these are business people, if these are people that are making all this money a month and they're in, they run, hold, hold on, babe, let me. I'm trying to answer your question, but go ahead. You got it. If they're running in these crowds, why why are they so amazed by your house? Because not everybody is there at that level. Eddie was not there at that level. Which what he's talking about and what he's posting and what he's saying, he looks very well off and very established. Listen again. He got established. He's a very talented person. Only thing I helped him do was help more people. That was literally it. Okay. The same way we bring up business owners up here, the same way we bring up, you know, people every day. I'm all about like actually like helping people. And that may be so hard to believe, but you guys, listen, man, if you guys are have any doubt about me, who I am, just go check me out on Instagram, Sean underscore T underscore Adam, just the one with the blue check. Go look at two highlights, my testimonials, and go look at my lifestyle highlights. It, you will see that I've been doing this for years. You will see videos of me in my place, everything timestamp. You'll see who's posting me. You'll see people I'm associated with. You'll see all of that. So if you have any doubt that I'm legit or whatever you guys may see, because I'm not even going to try to convince people anymore, go to my Instagram, Sean underscore T underscore. I'm just doing the blue check. Look at lifestyle, look at testimonials. And if you think that I'm like, you know, not it, you don't ever have to, you know, message me or see me again. But for the people that have more room in their heart to hustle rather than hate, the people that have more room in their heart to create rather than to be critical. If you guys are watching this, you got a 700 plus credit score. You want to actually add some strategy to your life mm -hmm. so that you can make an extra ten to $15,000 a month. If you got a 700 plus credit score, DM me on Instagram. Free game. Sean underscore T underscore just the one with the blue check. DM me free game. I'll never ask you for your credit card. I'll never ask you for money online. Now, if you want to have, uh, for my kings out there, if you want to have massive success or if you got a business or whatever it may be and you want to completely, you know, change, if you got a 700 plus credit score, you want to learn to make 10 to 15,000 a week, maybe even more, DM me or Instagram if you got a 700 plus credit score mentor and I'll personally reach out to you and see if mentorship is a great fit. I've been getting literally a lot of messages, so I promise you I will get to it. It may take me a while, but I promise you I will get to it. I'll personally reach out to you. Um, and again, I get it. There's a lot of scammers on the internet. There's a lot of people who pretend to be something. I, I get it. I'm not even here to try to convince you guys anymore. I don't have the energy for it. You guys can look and judge for yourself. So you either gonna look and be hated, or you're gonna you're gonna look and either be motivated, or you're gonna be like, hey man, this, you're gonna hate either one. I'm fine with either. Go look for yourself, Sean underscore T underscore Adams. Look at the highlight lifestyle, look at the highlight testimonials. I'm tagged, click on the post, interact. You can see who's a sh who's who's done the awards I've won, all the 
so much, like so much. So with that being said, I'm the real deal. You're gonna be absolutely blown away with what you see. While you guys are on there, make sure you follow my beautiful, absolutely stunning Diana Ross looking so protecting queen Shanice and make sure you follow Olivia Appleberry. All right. She's yeah, and follow me too at the girl Frankie. Girl Frankie. At the girl Frankie. You know That's awesome. So here's my thing, my last thing to you. Yeah, my ad, my Instagram is the girl Frankie. How you see my name is spelled right here, the girl Frankie. Now I feel like as a as a bit oh I wasn't done. I, I thought we were shouting shit out. You know, it's crazy how we went from you saying you was a bum to you giving these motivational <laughs> talkings i wish you would have did this when i asked you what you did because you told us you was a bum and now you're telling us to look at your testimonials now i feel like as a businessman that you say you are and everything that you say you are does it not rub you the wrong way that the only um cre credibility or cred credits that you tell us to go look at is via an instagram because i know you said something the other day about how you don't have a website and how you feel like you don't need a website but you want us to look at your instagram to believe you pictures pictures and videos are made up yeah, everything's made up. So with that being said, you can Google Sean Adams San Diego and there's plenty of stuff that like pops up. There's a lot of Sean Adams in the world, but if you Google Sean Adams San Diego, like I pop up, I'm all over it. So I got articles, I got press, I got all, all that type of stuff. It's, it's really not that hard to find me. So with that being said, I'm no longer here to try to convince you. If you guys think that I'm made up and like oh, everything's fake, like there's some stuff there that you literally cannot fake. Like it's one thing about who you know is another who knows you. And I think when you guys discover who knows me, you guys would be boldly surprised. So with that being said, I'm no longer gonna try to convince people every time you guys have doubters. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna be like, okay, dude, just go look me up, uh, on, go to my IG. And let's be honest, IG is like your resume to the world at this point. Like, come on, everybody knows it. Not like, for what you do, not for what you do. You're a businessman, that's not your resume. You said you don't even know what a resume is. You said you don't even have a resume or a website. When we meet somebody, you know what's so funny about what you're saying? When people apply for jobs, do you know that they look at people's social media? When yeah. they, you apply for jobs in corporate America, they even look at your social media. So what do you mean it's not a resume to the world? The big companies in the world look at your social media. Yep. Every single major company you know looks at people's social media. You know how they're people, looking at your you social media because you applied with a resume. They're looking at your social media because you applied for the job with a resume. They don't just look at your social media. Your social media, they do not look at somebody's website. Websites do not make you any money. Like how how many times how many times you guys been to Coca Cola website? How many times? Instagram how many is times? a website and they just made billions of dollars selling blue checks, which is one that you bought one yourself. Instagram is a website and they just made almost a billion dollars selling blue checks. So what are we talking about? But now Instagram's a website. I definitely yeah. There is an Instagram.com, babe. It's an app and it's a website. Awesome. So do which one gets more traffic, the app or the website? Either way, Instagram, whether it's the website or whatever, it's, everybody listen, knows not, what Instagram is. Instagram I'm, has I'm a not, website. Listen, you if you want to be right, you can you can 100% be right. I just know when people apply for the best jobs in America, people still look up their social media. So if you think that it's not relevant, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with anybody anymore. You guys think whatever you want to think. Quite frankly, I'm not I don't care. anything that's wrong. I'm not making this shit up. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. At this point, you just want to be right, and I'm going to let you be right. No, but for the people, Listen, all you guys have to do is go to my Instagram. You can see there's tagged posts. There's tagged posts in people in the testimonial. There's tagged posts in my lifestyle. I've been shouted out by billionaires. No, I've I get that you said that, oh, but here's my thing. You said that. I've won, I've won contests. I've beat out thousands of entrepreneurs in contests. I've won awards. I've done so many different things that, like, if you see it and you just feel like, I can't take free advice from this guy, even though he's he's not asking me for any money, like, then that's okay. Like, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm no longer... Like, don't even argue it with people. No, that is okay. But imagine, you said you know a lot of powerful millionaires and billionaires. Imagine being in a room with them and we're speaking about credentials. And then you get on stage and say, hey, go to my Instagram. Now it's paused. Damn. But y'all feel me, though. Like, imagine being in a room full of powerful people and everybody's like, this is my website. This is how you can find me. This is a list of this. You can never, you can never, but you, you get up there and it's like, Follow me on Instagram. Look at all my stuff. Like, no, you don't even have a website. Yes, I will go live after this for sure. But it's like, you don't even have a website. Like, you can't you can't be that powerful as you say that you is. You didn't comb your beard this morning. I'm not trying to... Hello? Oh. He didn't win and unplug the damn Wi-Fi box. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I've been on too long. Child, I know. 
I'm just asking what the people want. What y'all want me to ask next? You can't we you can't be in a room with millionaires and billionaires and we've got paperwork out and we got books and briefcases and suitcases and you walk up there with Be uh Beavis and Butthead and say, "Yeah, go to our Instagram." That's not I, make it make sense. What's up? Let's talk about it. So I know real niggas and I know business people. I know I know you know what I'm saying? Y'all want me to ask about the marriage? Kick her out. Kick your old ass mama out. <laughs> Y'all want me to ask about the marriage. Y'all follow me on Instagram before they kick me because y'all know he gonna play that song. The Girl Frankie. T-H-E-F-R-A-N-K-I-E-E. -E. Oh, wait. I didn't say girl. You did. T-H-E-G-I-R-L. Yeah, we yeah. do want a house tour, but you know we're not gonna get it, y'all. Anyway, this is my live. What's up, gay? We in this <laughs> Ask about the marriage. So where did y'all see the marriage? Because... That's what I want to know. I don't want to ask and he'd be like, oh, well, I was an entrepreneur. They say Ashley needs to buy her depression. I'm not asking that girl shit. He'd be liable to kick that girl. I love you, Shanice. Girl, we're going to just pray for Shanice. Give me a shout out. Shout out to Starstruck. Shout out to Star. Period. He not divorced. So how did we, let's get into the marriage, y'all. What do I say when they come back? They're going to end it. Y'all follow me because it's about to end. I can feel it. Ask about the PPP loan. Got it. Not the PPP. Hang up. No! <laughs> Ask about Shanice's family. Frankie, I love you. I love you too, babe. They ain't coming back. Click, clack. Give me a shout out too. Shout out to user 911. That was too much. Y'all, Did y'all really call the police? Y'all so <laughs> correct. No, y'all is crazy. Somebody give me a beat. I'm about to rap. Go ahead. Jump on the beat. Hold on. Uh, uh, uh. Frankie, you on the beat. Yeah. I just read they ass. Yeah. Frankie, you on the beat. Leave yeah. they ass like some grass. grass. Chop them up quick. Leave them in the ditch. Frankie, Did baby, Frankie, baby, Frankie in this bitch. Oh! <laughs> hey, though, my cash app is, um, no, let me stop. <laughs> this is my sister. That's, hey, how my, that's how my sister laughed. Her yeah. hair not done, amen. It's not done, baby. Frankie with two E's. The second E is because I'm extra. Hello? You can follow me at Carrie Plus More. Please. Carrie Plus More. Pro. No, me. I got hair under this. It's just, it look, y'all, it's, um, it's 1.30 in the morning in Richmond. How we doing? Now we crashed the live. Girl, we ain't even fucked up tonight. We popped out on the live. Girl, I, I was going to go out tonight, you know. Any of our friends up here. Hey, y'all. Right, what's up? Big Let Low, we love you, baby. Big Low, hey, Low. Hey, Ron. Ask Olivia's parents what? Ask him how he met. Shit. Y'all got to come up with one common question and all say it because it's going too fast. Ask him why it should need... Oh, ah! Shout out to Coco, K-O-K-O. -K -O. Shout out to Coco, I'm in love. Who do, do I got a business? This ass, I wouldn't show y'all, <laughs> but I can't. Oh, y'all see his BDB. Look at Shanice, eat it, just the eating ass. Corn, your fucking mother. <laughs> Ask about Shanice's family, okay. No. Shanice liked me. She was laughing. Y'all yeah, know. Y'all know she don't crack much smiles. Yeah, Shanice seemed like she was happy. So what is all this ten point four k stuff y'all send me? What is this? I feel like an old lady. Don't you feel bad for Sean sometimes? Honestly, Hell no. Because no. he don't feel bad for nobody else. He don't else. feel bad for them. The ex he got pregnant. He got a baby. <gasps> He's in there beating them. He's looking for the gun. <laughs> Ask about her bombastic side eye. Act like Sean. You know, no. sometimes Let's being an right. entrepreneur. Back your forehead a little bit. He goes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Did y'all see him with his nail with the thing on his finger? That's the close. He wanted to get a um, full set so bad. His gun is.